towering over farmlands in WA's southwest, Alcoa's Wager Up refinery has been an economic saviour. Refining bauxite into alumina, the plant has delivered hundreds of steady jobs to two generations of locals. For me, it's been really good, really good, very interesting. Every day here's a new challenge. But in the closest town of Yarloop, not everyone shares the enthusiasm. This, this area is being destroyed by an industry which it doesn't accept responsibility for its actions. John Harris is a member of a community action group that's been fighting for years to try to prove that the operation's causing chronic illnesses. I can't breathe. Suddenly I just lose the capacity of my lungs. I can't get air in. He blames the emissions from the refinery, but also the red dust from these vast stockpiles of toxic residue from the refining process. The group's photographic evidence of dust escaping from the area has led to the company being fined in court, the latest case in August this year. The last time was $27,000. Under the new cat laws, if you've got an unsterilised cat, you get fines $5,000. I mean, where's... <laughs> Where's the proportion in that? You can, you can contaminate a town and you find 27,000. It's ridiculous. But Alcoa's chief medical officer, Dr Michael Donoghue, says the health risk from the dust is minimal. If you do have a dust event, um, it's, a, it's a very short-term exposure. And so, you know, you're not going to be seeing any significant health consequences. But the health concerns have led to an exodus. Over the years, Alcoa has bought up hundreds of homes in the area to create a buffer zone. The transformation, along with the closure of the local timber mill, has led to the loss of shops and services. Well, for the town, it's, uh, it's been devastating. It's actually de destroyed the, the whole town, it destroyed the social fabric. The head of the action group, Vince Puccio, is himself a long-serving Alcoa worker. He's gathering support for the latest complaint to the WA government. I'm on a bit of a mission. Uh -huh. Our coal's licence expires on the uh, 12th of November. He's drafted a list of demands ahead of Alcoa's licence renewal next week, including a comprehensive health study of surrounding communities. This is not about shutting Alcoa down. I want, I want to make that clear. It is about ma uh, making them accountable. The residents have got a high-profile advocate, US campaigner Erin Brockovich, who's been leading a class action against Alcoa. The legal action was dismissed in the US, but she hasn't given up the fight. If Alcoa has a situation and those residents are in front of them and they're in any danger, absolutely, I would say, and I agree with the community, move them. If you need to continue on, don't harm them, don't trespass on them that way. Frankly, it's disrespectful at a very simple level. They're human beings too. Move them. The Wager Up refinery has been controversial since day one. There were protests in 1979 when the plant was approved. And by the late 90s, health concerns about the emissions prompted payouts to workers suffering from a condition called multiple chemical sensitivity. But that was years ago and the company's keen to put the past behind it. This is really probably the most studied refinery uh, in the world. But the residents aren't convinced they've been collecting their own log of cancer cases, 211 over the last five years, which they believe are linked to the plant. Until recently, Stephen King's wife Karen was part of the group, speaking out in the media about the health concerns. Everybody's sick. It's the stress of not being able to get out of there. Karen King died six months ago. She was suffering from lymphoma, a form of cancer she blamed on Alcoa. She hated them, to be honest. She hated them. And I don't use the word hate very often. But the company says studies show the air quality at Wager Up is typical of any rural area. The risk is less than one in a million, which is to say if you had a million people living close to the refinery, for 70 years, you would expect to see less than one person develop cancer as a result of the emissions. It's backed by 20-year research on its workforce by the University of Western Australia and Monash University. 
it's the best study that's ever been done on, on um, alumina and bauxite workers. Um, it's very comprehensive. Our study really showed that there was no increase in death and no increase in cancer. But the study is being questioned by Dr Jeff Payne, a consultant scientist with a long involvement in the Wager Up saga. I'd say that that's a very selective use of data. Workers are excluded if they worked from 1964 and left the company before 1983, having had nearly 20 years of exposure. We know nothing about those. Dr Payne also says that this research that the company commissioned on pollutants doesn't include many known carcinogens. We know that hundreds of carcinogenic and poisonous compounds are being pumped into the airspace of these people. It's logical that there will be a reaction. The group wants a bigger buffer zone similar to those at other WA alumina plants where the area separating residents from industry is 6 to 10 kilometres. How big is the buffer zone? It depends on where you are, uh, but it's off the order of 2 kilometres, 3 kilometres, that sort of size. But that's not really what's important. Erin Brockovich disagrees and says the WA government should listen to the residents. Isn't that what government is there for? They should. They should always hear the constituents. They should always hear the needs of those that put them in office. Alcoa has long-term plans to double the capacity at Wager Up, but some doctors point to the experience of the infamous West Australian asbestos mine at Whitnoom. The problem is with so many of these industrial-related exposures, we don't have all the answers. We've got nothing we can measure in a laboratory, and if you take the example of Whitnoom, we didn't know very much about the dangers of Whitnam until only five or six years before the mine closed when the first case of mesothelioma was described. And now we've got over a thousand. But the company says it's spent more than $50 million on emissions control and it's convinced the plant is safe. We are not seeing a picture of ill health as a result of refinery emissions. People should take a lot of reassurance from that. The local community remains divided on the health concerns. Neville Penny, who's lived in Yarloop all his life, says he and his family haven't suffered any negative health effects from the emissions. It would be great if Alcoa was able to develop you know, uh, another unit at this location. It would certainly provide a lot more jobs for the locals. But Vince Puccio is planning his retirement from Alcoa after 25 years and has vowed to continue the fight. My final words to them is, you're a neighbour from hell, which is what they are.